Uh, first of all, I'm <coughs> Professor Sean Parcells, and I would like to thank everyone for bringing me into this case, and we're here for the family to answer questions about what happened to Michael Brown. And I want you guys to understand that when an autopsy is done, that we look at the body in an anatomical position. This is the anatomical position. This is not how we stand, how we walk, but medically speaking, we like to describe wounds this way. And as you all know, Dr. Bodden and I concluded that he was shot at least six times. We've got one to the very top of the head, the apex. We've got one that entered just above the right eyebrow. We've got one that entered the top part of the right arm. We've got a graze wound, a superficial graze wound to the middle part of the right arm. We've got a <coughs> wound that entered the medial aspect of the right arm. And we've got a deep graze wound that produced a laceration to the palm of the right hand. Now these two, where the X's are, represent what Dr. Bodden and I feel are possible re-entry wounds. So the wound that hit the forehead right above the right eyebrow actually came out right around the right eye and went back in and then it exited again right here in the jawline and came out and went back into the right shoulder. That's from one bullet. Now we, uh, we have to confer that with the first autopsy. This wound right here to the side of the chest is also a possible re-entry wound. Now, which wound on the arm that correlates to, we're not sure. We have to correlate all of this with the first autopsy. And the other critical point that I want everyone to be very clear on is that this wound to the medial aspect of the right arm, just generally speaking, happened right about here, okay? So what Dr. Bodden and I feel that occurred, and by the way, this red mark is showing that same wound. This is not a separate wound. This is showing the same wound in the same location in that arm, but you're looking at it from the back. And as the attorneys were saying, there was a witness statement that said that he was walking away and the gun goes off and he kind of jerks. So the question asked to us was, could that wound occurred from him walking away and then he turns around? It's consistent with that. However, understand too that while the shot could have come from the back, because if I'm standing here walking along and get shot from that direction, you see I pull my arm up, it's in that same general area. The arm is a very mobile part of your body. So it also could have occurred when he was putting his hands up. So I put my hands up and you see where that wound is at. It could have happened if he put his arms across in a defensive manner. We don't know. And we still have to look at other aspects of this investigation before we can really start piecing things together. Dr. Bodden? Yeah, the, the attorneys behind me thought that there might be a question among you. Uh, we're here to see the young lawyer. Are any of these wounds inconsistent with the witness accounts that Michael Brown was shot while rushing the police officer? Uh, there, there, there could be consistent with his going forward or going backward, but they're for the front. And if he was shot uh, going forward, uh, uh, he would collapse uh, right away. The, the uh, problem, yeah, so it, it's possible. There are a number of different uh, possibilities to, to that. Yes, the question was how far away, yes. We can tell certain distance. We can tell the distance from the muzzle of the gun to the body or, and the body's clothing. Uh, if there's, the closer the g weapon is to the body, the more powder residue there'll be on the body and the skin and the clothing. In this instance, there's no 
uh, gunshot residues on the skin surface uh, so that the muzzle of the gun was at least one or two feet away, the muzzle at the time of discharge. It could have been 30 feet away, it would be the same thing. But in order to be firm about that, we also have to look at the clothing, which we haven't had the opportunity to look at because sometimes the clothing can filter out gunshot residues. Yeah. There are six bullets struck him. Six bullets struck, and two may have uh, re-entered, uh, and three bullets were recovered at the first autopsy, for, according to our report. Uh, there were the, the two head wounds and the bullet in the chest stayed in the body and were removed at the first autopsy uh, from our examination of the body. One of the things that's going to be important for us, for us to see is the x-rays, uh, the, the old black and white x-rays that will show where the bullets were at, before the autopsy was started. And that's documented in x-rays taken before an autopsy in a gunshot wound case. Uh, yes, uh, I, I spoke with uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Mary Case, and they did the they did all the proper X-rays, photographs, and uh, they should be available at some time, uh, whether today or whether three or four months from now. Often depends on what the prosecutor wants to do. That is, Mary Case could have told you everything I'm telling you on day one. Uh, but often in an investigation like this, it's not uncommon for prosecutors not to want information re released. But I think in my experience, when that happens, it only gets the community more upset. <laughs>